Not for the Planetary Transition and the Law of Return by Daniel Gagliardo Currently, the team aims at reflecting intraterrestrial or extraterrestrial reality goes through an intensive process of mixing or syncretism. Few are the individuals and groups which can be used as non-interfered channels. The strong tendency not to release knowledge and techniques from the previous cycle obstructs much of the work of the hierarchies that help the current planetary process. Unprecedented knowledge is offered today to the human consciousness of the Earth's surface. For assimilation, the emptying of outdated theories and techniques is critical. Synthesis are being offered to humanity. The acceleration and regulation of specific karmic process become real. The deactivation of the chakras, the abandonment of the direction of energy, the transcendence of the free will, a part of this new cycle of female polarity manifested on the planet. Integrative forces of cosmic approach the Earth, and the planetary consciousness rises to meet them. The spring of the unique life offers energies of transmutation. Man is invited to drink, but to this day only a few respond to the call. Their response tears the darkness and implants new energy, thanks to which other will glimpse the path, gradually experiencing the needs of the evolutionary plan. Not for the Planetary Transition and the Law of Return by Daniel Gagliardo Not one. Collaborating with this structural energy, it's a part of the task of a group dedicated to express the evolutionary plan. In these times of transition, where laws of one cycle or another coexist under the need to restore the planetary balance, our group receives the opportunity to collaborate with an essential sector of the population of this area of the planet. The team involved in what we call cosmic philosophy or cosmosophy is virtually definable as endless. Every search has a start. A being at every stage of its development struggles to transcend the evolutionary state in which it is located. Today the planet passes through a stage of implantation of elements of cosmic life. These elements are of subtle character, meaning that they are intended to collaborate with the use of planetary matter. Currents of life, solar and cosmic, participate in this action and lead it to achieve the evolutionary purpose of this solar system. The universes are expressions arising from archetypes. When we say that a planet, a solar system, a galaxy or a set of galaxies have to express their evolutionary purpose, we are saying that those nuclei should express as perfectly as possible the archetypes that provided the impulses to sustain and externalize them. These currents of cosmic life are responsible for leading the universes to its evolutionary fulfillment. Within a solar system, it is said that a planet is consecrated or becomes sacred when it begins to express without interference the attributes of the solar logo. To reach that state, the kingdoms that compose it must be able to express the ceremonial of existence. On Earth, that ceremonial, that it's impeded in its manifestation. 
The responsibility for this impediment and its highest rate rests upon the humanity of the service of the planet, of which we are part. It is at this stage of planetary transition that a percentage of beings on that planet's surface are receiving an intensive training aimed to accelerate transcendence from the current state of consciousness that governs the surface of the globe. It is through the inner core of individuals that this training and incentive action affects the transcendence and enters human consciousness. Every transformation begins in response to a process lived in a framework of internal consciousness. It is in those inner levels that the pilgrim walks the path of light. The path of infinite exceeding and overcoming gives him the possibility to return with expanded, amplified consciousness to the source of life. Much of the interest that these issues arouse is based on information regarding extraterrestrial life. Also, and as early as recent years, the revelation of intraterrestrial civilizations was a point of intensive polarization for those who were receptive to the unprecedented. Only consciousness, with characteristics of flexibility, remained before them, and other relative information perceiving in them the spirit of the new times. The planetary polarity moved in 1988, more precisely on August 8. That change in polarity marked the beginning of a stage essential for the evolutionary conduction of consciousness. The masculine, or also known as positive polarity, ends its cycle of regency and expression. The quality of externalization characteristics of the polarity begins to reverse. The cycle of female expression of energy with its qualities of intertheorization and receptivity imprints the planetary side of existence according to a cosmic plan, impulses that are somehow definable as archetypal. Within the context of this range of energy manifestations, the planetary center have a fundamental prominence. Such center can be defined as the energy platforms for the expression of the supra-physical or intraterrestrial civilizations. Humanity can be defined at the cosmic level within three based aspects of evolutionary condition. The earthly humanities are representing deep consciousness. The humanities on the surface of the planet, like the one we currently could pose, are representing surface consciousness. The evolved extraterrestrial humanities are representing supra consciousness. Within the scale of energies, Currently, on our planet, we can say that intraterrestrial civilizations are the nexus between our superficial humanity and supraconscious or extraterrestrial civilizations. Our civilization must learn to decipher the current signals that are written on our sky. Those signs are not given to us to confirm our tendency to phenomenological or our attachment to the material or superficiality. They arrive harboring and announcing the aurora, the awakening a new state of consciousness. From these pages, our challenge will be to delve into a mysterious area for most human beings. That area is our interior. That the whole cosmos is a part of our consciousness. That by an in-depth design plan of universal laws, 
knowing our interior, we will be revealed the infinite character of the unique existence of which we are part. Notes for the Planetary Transition and the Law of Return by Daniel Gagliardo Note 2 When we firmly prepare to travel our journey, the help we will receive will far exceed the power of the searching effort. We could say that at internal levels of existence there is a whole scaffolding of energies which justifies its reason, its fundamental purpose, rise and the arte, through the assistance provided to human consciousness. Interterrestrial centers are the support of that scaffolding of which we refer. They synthesize powerful energies of the solar and cosmic life and offer them to humanity on the surface of the planet within the broader context most appropriate to their evolutionary process. The interterrestrial center of Erex is located in a mountainous area in a wide valley contained in the vicinity of the Utorico Hill, Guebrada de la Luna, in the province of Córdoba, Argentina. Erx is a term in cosmic language Irdin, but in its turn composes an acronym whose meaning can be interpreted as the station of the sidereal cosmic that reminded on the planet, or the encounter of the sidereal cosmic reminded to assist the planet. The inhabitants of Erex are beings who have exceeded the evolutionary range of the surface of this planet. Among the components of this advanced civilization are beings who at some point participated in a different ways in the realm of our surface humanity. Erex leads the human consciousness on the path of initiations. During its asceticism, the being receives, with the scope of its internal core, fluid energies and impulses destined to overcome its polarization within the outer sphere of existence. Such polarization is the result of having misused fundamental aspects of the law of material karma the use of free will, without having taken into account that it was the means for the external counterpart of being to take conscious steps in the transfer of the direction of concrete existence. In the favor of being's internal life, make worse of the commitment to the layer of the planetary psyche. Resulting from this deviation, the impossibility of the law of karma would serve to lead the man on the surface on the planet to the encounter with the cosmic life. Erx attracts cosmic life to its encounter with planetary existence. It brings closer to the infinite consciousness the principles of the consequentiality and multiplicity of the deep levels of the unique life, so far distant for us. This important planetary center is the energy based on which internal groups operate. These groups are currently 12 and they channel ray energies. The entities that bring together each of these groups are located on an energetic scope in the center of Erex, symbolically called the Temple of the Sphere. This temple expresses within this internal civilization and the relationship that maintains with the cosmic sphere of existence. The sphere, the area as a geometric energy structure, represents the cosmos in all its parameters. 
While the 12 rays active on the planet today are represented by the quality of these 12 internal groups, Erex as a planetary energy nucleus is given out energies of the second ray, love, wisdom. In the communion with two other centers, Mirnajat and Mislitlam. Mislitlam being the current region center of the planetary sphere. This condition of projecting energies of the second ray turns Erex a powerful mirror of irradiation of Christ's energy. Erex, together with Aurora, gives humanity the experience of projecting on a concrete level part of the energies that inherit in their deep levels of existence. In Erex Valley, manifestation of subtle range loom on the outer side of life. At the etheric levels closest to our uptake, Erex projects the light, incentivizing, encouraging those who have been chosen to participate in this experience to allow their light flow and to be available to liberation. There, in the Knights of Erex, consciousness seems to recompose a lost connection in remote times. The religion with the inner source is no longer distant and subjective. For those who are receptive, the energy of religiosity emerges in the consciousness, affecting the first degree of a series of communions on the path to return. When our group received the indication to implant its energy in that area, we perceived that our work of unknown characteristics was asking us to manifest and materialize it. That work, the foundations of which would be revealed to us as the progressed preparatory stages, would be based on the implementation of new patterns of life and behavior. The tests would not stop joining us. They were the parameters of our dedication that allowed an increasingly conscious relationship with the action of the law of purification. The required collaboration by planetary consciousness to the group is to leave the internal present within the aura of that mirror. Tuning what the inner phase of existence demands, the requirements for the transformation are an energy that is presented to us as infinite. Our true vocation was revealed with intensity. It was nothing but knowing the pulsar of our interior and assisting its purpose. It is the way of all beings to discover that unique vocation the phases of path of initiations and the energies of religiosity are an expression of Eric's dynamics that show us the path. Letting the pilgrim, who we all are, continue its march, which is the daring for this challenging stage of planetary transition. Notes for the Planetary Transition and the Law of Return by Daniel Gagliardo Not number 3 In our last meeting, we talked about Eric's interterrestrial center, the headwaters of the harboring of profound energies of the planetary consciousness, as well as of the solar and cosmic entities that are acting on Earth's orbit. Erex forms a triad, within the context of the seven interterrestrial centers revealed so far. Within the triangulation, Erex interacts with the center of Mistlit Lan and Aurora. All three, in a current cycle, are expressed as a major centers. Our consciousness will try to approach the energies of Mistlit Lan today. Within the current planetary polar phase, this center is expressed as the region state of consciousness. At a specific level, it can be said that Mistlit Lam 
places its external counterpart in a region of Peru within the context of the Amazonian Andes. This center assumed its regency starting in 1988, the year in which the planetary polarity was moved. A high percentage of the hierarchies that comprise it participate in the region center of the previous cycle known as Shambhala. Mistlitlam can be defined as the most advanced interterrestrial civilization. Sanat Kumara, who was head of the hierarchy in Shambhala, is today the planetary regent of Mistlitlam. To carry out this task, this high consciousness today needs to express high energies whose vibratory pattern is symbolized in a name that it's used today to reveal itself to humanity. Samat Kumara is known today as Amuna Kur. This name keeps in its vibration powerful aspects of cosmic energy. It cannot be limited to any scope with the planetary sphere. His consciousness is the energy of cohesion for all the elements that participate in this universe Earth. In Erdin's cosmic language, Mistlitlam means wise men who dwell there express energies of love and wisdom in a gradation unknown to us on the surface of the planet. The new philosophy and the implementation of the new genetic code, such as the uptake of the superior planetary purpose, are expression and activities undertaken by Mistlit Lan. The energy onozone finds in its powerful planetary mirror the most receptive nucleus for its implantation. The laws active in this center is most powerful expression. The superior hierarchy on the planet is Mistlit Lam, which is composed of 12 entities of high evolutionary rank. Seven of them work in variety degrees of externalization and the remaining five worked in a hidden way. This information may be modified as the transition cycle progresses and certain elements are enabled to interact at material levels and the other energy conjunctures. This higher core platform revealed to these days it's composed of Amunakur, Solhuat Kutuli, Amach, Mayuma, Daikuma, Ashtarajgran, Oshmiuk. In a parallel to the expression as a hierarchy of Mistlit Lan, these seven revealed entities perform other tasks in other planetary centers and in solar and cosmic fields. Another of the tasks assumed by this mirror is to regulate aspects links to the law of purification which is acting today with greater intensity on the surface of the planet. Mistlit Lam regulates and neutralizes aspects of disintegrating forces which work in the opposite direction to the evolution. These involutive forces try to interfere with the work that the hierarchy of Mayuma carries out with the depth knowledge of what must be dissolved and removed from the surface of the planet. The destruction they attempt to implant does not recognize the profound purpose to which each particle must reach, causing severe interference in the omission of what the laws reserve for the evolutive elements at a certain level of existence. Mistlit Lan not only captures the divine purpose of the planet, but watches over the life of the particles through which it must be expressed. The energy that governs everything arrives at Mistlit Lan from the central celeste government. This inexhaustible source of impulses establishes the elevation of the planetary existence. During the previous cycle, many searchers tried to search the mecca of the consciousness of that time. Shambhala was the light 
were we supposed to reach? Most of those beings in search could never reach it. The purity of heart and the transcendence of ambitions kept those portals. The light of Mistlid Lam gleam in our path. Its sphere of existence tells us what we must transform ourselves into. Cycles have changed, but the guardians are still there. Today portals lead to an even greater reality from those in the past. The pilgrim does not aspire to cross them and he only advances because he knows no other way to participate in the ceremony of existence. His heart is beating, expressing the rhythm of the unique life. The portals fades and the light of mistlit lan, like an endless beam, points to the pilgrim, the infinite. Notes for the Planetary Transition and the Law of Return by Daniel Gagliardo Note 4 Today in our meeting we will continue our conversation from where we left it at our last meeting. We will discuss information based on the three major planetary centers of what is called Major Triad, composed of Erex, Mistlitlan and Aurora. In particular Aurora, the information of this center keeps for some inhabitants of this area of the planet a resonance of a particular tenor precisely because it's located in the internal terrestrial levels in this region of Uruguay. Beyond the various religious connotations which unfold in external counterpart of that area, the civilization of Aurora does not encouraging its cosmic essence, doctrinal processes which emerge from an evolutionary profile that does not yet mature enough on the surface of this planet. Aurora represents for the consciousness of humanity the recomposition of a, the archetype. It's expressed the cosmic essence of healing, energy of cure. Aurora its cosmic cure center with extra systematic scopes. As a potential planet of the schools of healers, Aurora acquires in that sense more accentuated character as a planetary mirror, as a superphysical civilization. Aurora is composed of entities and beings belonging to the lineage of healers. Also, this center maintains a close connection with certain phalanxes of Deva's hierarchy and receives within it members of extraterrestrial civilizations of advanced cosmic evolution. The Amah hierarchy is the head of that center. During the previous cycle, Amah was known as Master Moria, channeler of energies of the first ray, willpower. Today, the flow of this consciousness energy is still expressed in his new role and by the center of Aurora itself. For expressing healing energies, this center deters streams of transmutation to all sectors of the planetary life. It is not only that human beings express different levels of imbalance and they need to transform. To some extent, all evolving particulars within this planetary scheme must access the cure and recompose, recommends its connection with the archetypal pattern. To access what the essence of Aurora offers to humanity, the individual must have two fundamental energies in its consciousness, fate and the intention of transformation. Without them, the being cannot become receptive of the elements that are internally made available to them. The unique energy of the universe is called Onozone. In the Erdin language, it means state of unchangeable harmony. 
onosome integrates three streams of interaction with the different phases of the material universe. Brill energy is one of those currents. Brill is healing energy. His presence in the civilization of Aurora is the foundation of the role that he unfolds. Many beings who participate in life on the surface of the planet are now part of Aurora. Some of them even have a recognized influence on human consciousness. Such as this is the case of Padre Pio, a being that its latest incarnation participated in the structure of the Catholic Church. Today, Father Pio is assimilated as consciousness in the center of Aurora, a consciousness that having expanded evolutionary collaborates with humanity from a superlative degree and that of the Italian monk. As we insinuated at the beginning about the sector of this humanity represented by the beings located at Aurora, while they sustain a generation of religious and worship energies, they cannot stand before these realities without putting some clothing on them. The less we cover with certain veils the profound realities that this interterrestrial center represent, the closer we will be to participating in our own internal reality, allowing it to become present in the concrete counterpart of our lives and to exert its balancing influence. For us as humanity, Aurora represents the dawn we are all waiting for. It is the essence that enables us to embrace an existence where harmony is not a goal to be achieved, but the stable basis of consciousness. At the nights of Aurora, until very recently, lights that spoke of that nearby dawn were abundant across the skies. Today, the external activity of the cosmic and interterrestrial hierarchies in a high percentage has been passing through and has functionated at the most profound levels. First, our attention was caught in the external sphere, and now we are encouraged to adhere to the reality through the introspection capacity that it's a part of our task to develop. Like the dynamic principle of any of the active centers on the planet, the irradiation of aurora can be received or even perceived without the need to travel to the superficial counterpart of the place. Area, which on a specific level is within the boundaries of the residency of aurora, a name that symbolizes what lies there. This doesn't mean that some individuals uh, don't have to enter, for deep reasons, the strong subtle magnetic fields that that center imposes. In general, it will be prudent not to encourage spiritual tourism in the sectors where energies such as auroras emanate. The devitalization of the radiating pools of subtle energy occurs when the flow of people going in their search tends to use this energy selfishly to stop asking and to control the anxiety of expectation is a step that many are yet to take to understand that what happens to us in our path is given to us by the laws for our growth and learning the path to the cure and the encounter with the emanating energy of Aurora need to be consumed by our transformation. The time to confront it is today. The energy to carry out its inherent in our deep constitution. Aurora, for those who dare to take that step of transformation, holds the access key to a new human consciousness. 
Nuts for the Planetary Transition and the Law of Return by Daniel Gagliardo Not 5 The revelation of the existence of the interterrestrial centers, as well as that of so many other elements that make a planetary, solar or cosmic life, is symbolizing our birth into a new state of consciousness. What yesterday reminded hidden from the minds of the human beings, today manifests itself externally in order to induce it and to participate in an existence aligned with the laws of energy. What it's offered to humanity is the key of a prison built with the materials of its own weakness, of its selfishness and of its ambiguity. The essence of millions of beings participating in today's civilization remains encapsulated. The rigidity of an ego that does not know flexibility and ignores its own destiny to be absorbed into the sea of creation is its jailer. The energies of rescue work to release the light. Law is its purpose. Light and law are the an exhaustible sight of the unique life. To be born into this new state of consciousness, we must first be certain that what we represent today needs to be transcended. Transcending this current state that does mean having more than we have, does not mean more ambition, to become more competitive, and to encapsulate ourselves even more than we already are. Transcending involves the abandonment of values that do not present an evolutionary achievement for consciousness. Transcending is simultaneously arriving. Each stage of the gradual significance of that what is not internally covered as a pattern of life and behavior is to reach a certain degree of receptivity. Being this receptivity and its maturation cycles, what the hierarchies define as the ability to give. We are assisting in various ways the deterioration of this current culture. Our energy should not be determined in the service of a mosaic of a system which the same planetary consciousness does not present as current. The new humanity, the new Earth, is not something we should expect. They are not experiences which we must confirm valuable and practicable from being proven to the quality in a laboratory of the current system of general behavior. The new earth is a reality of powerful dynamism. The truth of this expression can already be perceived in the vibratory currents coming from those who built it in themselves. In subtle, profound and supramental levels, it blooms and flourishes turning its seeds to be the rigid concrete layers of this planetary surface. Those who dare to germinate that underlying principle become an extension of the creative life. It is the beings who self-convoke themselves to participate in this transition reflect and embody this new consciousness. None of us would have been incarnated here if not to manifest this energy. To manifest, it is to express the evolutionary plan envisaged for this universe, Earth. The essence of any genuine revelation has not other quality and intentions, but to boost its manifestation. In the material structure of the consciousness of being, this new condition reveals another circuit of energies, a new flow, which allows us to adhere to internal impulses with lucidity and discernment. 
the chakras are entering hyperfunction in beings a certain internal ad advancement. The chakras that served as condensers and energy regulators during the previous cycle are now absorbed into the vortex of the right consciousness. Men will be free from the strong influence of the instinctive forces. The energy of the right consciousness circulates in the opposite direction to that of the chakras. The laws of onazon, state of unalertable, unchangeable harmony, are the engine of this activation. As we progress on the path of initiations, these new centers are activated. The higher is their development, the more active our participation in this new state of consciousness becomes. The right consciousness, also called cosmosodo medullar field, refers to the consciousness of the being in which it begins to have pulses of existence without borders. The inner core, soul and monada determine and straighten out through these new centers their fluid access to the material counterpart of existence. The new pattern of existence that we need to express is of the energy of freedom. This energy, which we call freedom, is the essence that will govern the new humanity. It will be interesting to ask the following question. What is freedom? What do we, human beings, call freedom? According to the hierarchy instructions on the matter, as it passes through existence in the human kingdom, the unchanging essence is then encapsulated in what we conceptualize as ego. This powerful encapsulation only begins to transcend the essence when the ego, the human being, recognizes the energies of the soul and prepares to express them. From that perspective and significance of the encapsulation is what we could also define as freedom. Among the nuances that this parameter would offer, the so-called freedom is the condition of free expression of our inner nuclei in the field of the material life. To be free means to give our inner nuclei to the regency of our existence in the realm of our personality, in relation to what the ego must experience, freedom is the loose of the free will. The abandonment of the selfish illusion of being able to dictate the steps, to follow, to leave the internal present of the internal reality. The right consciousness for those who begin to develop the path to the new it is the representation of men crossing the portals of the cosmos. It symbolizes the transformation of human consciousness. Through it, the essence is connected to the source. The law of return gives it as the tool that must unite what was set aside from what was always offered to conduct it. To aspire to the new is to aspire to the drive. When we discover that, our only vocation is to know that conductive and dynamic truth, then, for the first time, we will be stepping on the apparently distant and mysterious new Earth. Notes for the planetary transition and the law of return by Daniel Gagliardo not six. Most of us who inhabit this planet do not know our true potential. Fully aware of the play of forces proposed by the planetary psychic level, we confuse the involutionary orientation coming from those retrograde nuclei with the goal and purpose for which we incarnate. 
Between incarnations, we go through periods of deep activity. A great part of that activity is given in the revision of all that we experience in our last incarnation in the specific levels of existence. From the perspective of the soul, we see with neutrality all our mistakes and deviations. We intend to work in the next incarnation to reverse those evils and generated interferences. In reincarnating again, we have no other goal than to expand our capacity for service and to extend permitted by our range of consciousness manifests and fulfill our part of the evolutionary plan. We return into the material counterpart of life in the most favorable conjunctions for what we must accomplish. The field proposed by the laws is always the most appropriate for our learning, to achieve that which is so necessary to pass the stage of our evolutionary path diligently we have the help of the energies of the soul. It is the soul who keeps the knowledge of what we must fulfill and transcend. When the ego is again submerged in matter, it usually remembers nothing of that profuse planning of a restorative nature carried out levels of lower density. It is then where we face with simplicity and synthesis our internal commitment becomes, in most cases, practically unsustainable. Prey to passions and expectations, we attribute our plain and selfish rationing the conduct of our life towards the material and superficial purpose. How then would it be possible to fulfill our evolutionary goal erased by our identification with the games of forces that take place in these compact levels? The soul guards the essence of what we will have to fulfill. Its task is none other than to escape from the influences of material fields and in recognition of their existence and activity to manifest that hidden purpose. On the silent dimension, it brings us closer to the energy of nuclei even more profound than their own essence. When we become receptive, their irradiation harmonizes the area where we interact. As our efforts focus on knowing it, clarity about our goal keys to a chimera. Being a mirror, the closest to the material levels, aspire to find its reflection, inserts us into a dynamic of instructions of a transforming character. Being able to make our transfer from one aspect of the revolutionary law to another is currently related to the fulfillment of our internal purpose. Transcending the law of material karma is one of the symbols of the rescue. The rescue is the elevation of consciousness. This elevation speaks to us of the fulfillment of internal stages of individual character, which we are representatively cells that conform to a greater plan. At the beginning of this writing, we referred to the lack of knowledge of our true potential. In a vast and flexible way, we could say that there is no limits to a consciousness. This statement is based on the fact that any level we reach is merely circumstantial, and thus even that which today is outside our capacity of manifestation is part of what lays in our essence. A pioneer in consciousness is one that offers itself to express the unknown that which may not even have the capacity to rationalize it. The pioneer is the one who works with the unknown potential. He is the one who discovers that although unfathomable, the potential and he conform and come from the indivisible essence. 
the pioneer is the oasis in matter. Through him, the crystalline side of the inner reality fecundates the desert of human consciousness. The occult laws, non-existent for the majority, fluidly govern the world where the pioneer carries out his service, where the pioneer implants himself, the new earth emerges under his feet, where he serves, the new attitude flourishes, where he looks, he sees only the symbols of new age. As we expand our capacity to transcend the unreal and glimpse another format of existence, we demonstrate the utilization of that hidden potential. Somehow we become pioneers. We begin to perceive what remains hidden or distant to others. The parameters that serve as references for our consciousness are situated in another strip of reality. The correct thing cases to be related to the speculative capacity of our mind and it's pointed out to us by the inner life through the new vortex. Discernment becomes a fluid experience of attention, genuine and straightforward attention to the impulses of the right consciousness. The potential to develop will manifest itself as we take care and extend these impulses. They commune with the reality of the unique. Having distanced ourselves from it does not mean that it does not embrace and govern us. Although certain achievements may seem distant and merely theoretical, no consciousness will be able to arrive at certain stage of the path without first participating in what they represent and transforming them into practical energy. As we are beginning to perceive, the help for this to be achieved is immense. There is no element which in one way or another cannot be used by the laws to symbolize such assistance. Human consciousness in general refrains from being permitted by these saving energies. Meanwhile, it depletes the few forces that it can summon, in sustaining an illusion which beforehand it is condemned to inflict on it imbalance and frustration. In a practical stage of its existence, the being perceives that it must march to the encounter of another reality. In the measure that that idea becomes stronger and more precise, it discovers that its existence exceeds the mere framework of personal conveniences. Thus, the research is transformed into what it is internally a response to the inner call, he begins to see that going to the inner encounter requires entering a path. In the beginning, that path crosses areas that are familiar to the searcher. The more he threatens himself in these trails proposed by the path, the further away he becomes from any ambition to exhaust it. When he reaches a certain shift, he discovers that some time ago, all that path offers him is energy of transformation. He also perceives that he could not return to the stretches he knew give him confidence and security. The light that was present in the workers' nights had silently prepared him to aspire to the unknown. A light without words instructed him about the pilgrim's consciousness. The light revealed to him that he, like all particles in evolution, must return to the source, the adobe of the chosen. Becoming a pilgrim, he knows he belongs nowhere. He flows in a cycle of existence, sustaining his ceremonial. The light can now present itself more intensely to the pilgrim. He, the reverence within himself, and gives himself to his purifying action. A percentage of individuals that inhabit the surface of this planet 
reaches that shift in the path. The footprints left by this and another pilgrims operate as symbols of what they will once go through. The intraterrestrial and extraterrestrial civilizations accompany the steps of the pilgrim. The light they express is the same that he discovers in his interior. Thus, the consciousness of the pilgrim is immersed in the revelation of a unique life that encompasses everything.